This is the problem as conventional state seasons. Washington, D.C. is out of control, and they're, they're not going to relinquish power on their own. This is what we want to affect. Next slide. There's four major areas that we want to look at, and the first one is spending and the debt crisis, national debt. The regulatory crisis, we got more regulators than we can even talk about. They pass all the laws, not the legislators. The uh, congressional attack on state sovereignty and the federal takeover of decision making. And we'll talk about each of those in more detail. Next slide. We have got 19.2 last time I checked in a couple of weeks trillion dollars in national debt and that debt's growing by my measurement on my timex a million dollars every minute 15 seconds how long can we wait to do something about that that's only part of the story you've also got the social security and other unfunded liabilities that's added on top of that 20 trillion dollars and if they confiscated everything we have, it wouldn't pay the debt off. We're not going to tax our way out of this debt. It's not going to happen. From my perspective, the only way we're going to get out of this debt is to grow the economy. We're going to have to grow our way out of this debt problem. Federal bureaucracy has placed regulatory burdens on business and it's caused conflicted and crushing situations on the business. And there's little accountability, I'd say no accountability right now between agencies. years Congress has been using federal grants to keep the states under control. I had a conversation with one of our representatives this past session in, right here in Jackson and he told me a story about a road he was trying to build and all I could think about was this line right here. By attaching mandates to these grants Congress has turned the legislatures into regional agencies rather than truly independent state governments. And there's a, a radical social agenda attached to all this. Next. The founders believed that the structure of limited government would provide the greatest protection of liberty, and I do too. There will be checks and balances at the federal level. That is just about gone, if not completely gone. And collusion among the lawmakers in Washington, D.C. has replaced those checks and balances. This is my opinion. There's not much difference in Washington, D.C. between Democrats and Republicans anymore. The court, the federal Supreme Court, has become a political agency, and we're hanging by a thread there right now. And the parties are more interested in protecting and taking care of the party than they are the nation. Next. What we're doing is not a partisan issue, or it shouldn't be. It in fact appears that it was a partisan issue in Jackson this year, but it shouldn't be. Washington, D.C. will never voluntarily relinquish meaningful power. If we're waiting on them to fix this problem, it's not going to happen. And we can't wait forever to start changing things. That's why the states and citizens must be proactive about making, taking power back. If we don't do it, it's not going to happen. And that brings me to Article 5. I don't know if you read the Constitution, a lot of you probably have, you probably know more about it than I do, but Article 5 is what the founders gave us to go fix this very problem. They had completely finished the Constitution and they had left for the day, they came in to, to uh, close it up, and one guy, Mason was it? Colonel George Mason. George Mason, came in and said, guys, we have made a mistake. 
we give the federal government all the power to amend the Constitution. And if they ever go tyrannical and get out of control of the states, the people have no way to reel it back in. So they added to Article 5 the power for the states to call a convention. There's never been one. We believe it's time for one. The founders, next, the founders knew the federal government would one day become drunk with their abuse of power. Most important check to this power is Article 5. Article 5 gives the states the power to call a convention for the purpose of proposing amendments to the Constitution. Proposing amendments, that's what we're about. There are two methods to propose amendments to the Constitution. The first one is the one that's typically been used over the years where two-thirds of Congress proposes and then it goes out for three-fourths of the states to ratify. The second method for proposing amendments is convention of states called on the request of two-thirds of the state's legislators. Two-thirds of the states is 34 states. We have to pass legislation that is identical, so identical that it can't be challenged in court, that calls for a convention and it has to have specific topics because the convention cannot be entered. It has to be specific to the topic that's passed by the state's legislatures. That's one reason we won't have a runaway convention. The uh, second reason that we're not going to have a runaway convention is the 38 states that have to ratify. When this convention is called, the, the 34 states that call it will go to a designated location and they will hold the convention. There they will take the topics that are in our uh, language and they will choose the things that they want to do or don't want to do. They will vote on those things. And then that goes out to all 50 states for ratification. That ratification requires 38 states. That's the second thing that's going to stop this from being a runaway convention. Just as a point of note, Mitt Romney won 24 states. McCain won 28 states. George W. Bush won 31 states. We've got 31 Republican governors. This is not something that the Republicans or the, the, the right wing is going to get away with, modifying and going crazy, because it takes 38 states to get there. That is a tough nut to crack. We know it's going to be hard. We're here for the long haul. So the runaway convention, I think, is a misnomer. It only takes 13 states. It only takes one body out of 13 states to put this down makes it extremely hard to pass so if there's anything that's crazy or out of line it's not going to pass the application that we have going through the legislatures right now has three main tenets the first tenet is to limit the power and jurisdiction of the federal government we want to return the power to the states that's a pretty broad topic. There are quite a few things that those state legislatures could choose to do under this headline. The second line is to impose fiscal restraints on the federal government. What we think would be applicable here is a balanced budget and some kind of tax restraints so that they can't tax us more to raise the budget higher. And there's lots of other things that could be there. But again, that'll be up to the legislators, the delegates that each state sends there. And the third thing is to limit the terms of office for members of Congress and other federal officials. That is the line item that gives us the most pushback in the state of Mississippi. When we talk to the legislators, that's the one thing they don't want. My point of view on that specific thing is, is the majority of the American people say that they want to have term limits. Maybe it's a bad idea, but the American people deserve to be heard. They need to pass this legislation, go have a convention, and in the convention that they determine that it's a bad idea, vote it down and come back and tell the American people why. But at least let them be heard.
in the convention would be one state, one vote. As we stand here today, we've got eight states that's passed this uh, legislation. This year, Alabama, Tennessee, Louisiana, and Oklahoma passed this year. And around Mississippi, we're surrounded on three sides. As soon as Arkansas passes, we're going to be on an island by ourselves. Next slide. This year, this legislative session, we had 31 states where we had legislation in process. Some of them are still moving. This is a list of 31. You see Mississippi in the center. I'm going to talk about Mississippi. <coughs> we had uh, Dan Eubanks submitted HCR 113 for us, and he had co sponsors of Steve Hopkins and Dan Criswell. The leadership in Jackson did not let that come out of committee. It died in committee. And we had Senator Angela Hill submit SC 657, which was identical legislation. We ran the same thing in both houses parallel. And it died in committee as well. So that's the headway we made there this year. The big picture for COS, our mission, we want to urge and empower state legislators to call a convention of states to propose amendments to the Constitution to curb the federal abuse. <coughs> Next slide. George Washington said once, liberty, when it begins to take root, is a plant of rapid growth. I'm going to talk about Mississippi's growth and where we are now. The national plan, where we are nationally, the plan is to have a viable political operation in at least 3,000 of 4,000 state house districts in 40 states. Okay. In those 3,000 house districts, we plan to have 3,000 district captains who will organize at least 100 people each. Currently, we have 1.4 million people uh, nationwide. In, here in Mississippi, uh, we have at least one person in every district in every state. So we're active in every district in every state now. Mississippi, we use those same ratios and we came up with, it's a three-quarter ratio, 0.75. That would be 91 uh, districts of 122 that we currently have. With 100 supporters each, it's going to put us at 9,100 supporters. And our goal is to be there by January of 2017 when we go back into session. We currently have a little bit over 4,700, and we're growing every week at a rate of about 40 people a week. And we realize that we need to grow at about three or four times that rate, and we put some management plans together to create that growth. We're not there yet, but we're working toward that goal. How can you help? Join our team by signing up on our website. Become a leader in your district. Sign a convention of states petition. Those petitions are very important to us. We queue those up by district. And when we go to Jackson, we take those petitions from that representative or senator's district. We put them in a pile and we carry them to them and he can look through them and see the names and addresses of people that vote for him that support us. And the more we take to him, the better off we are. So please, those petitions are very important to us. Educate your circles. Ask them to go to our website. If they want to volunteer, they can on the website. Huge amount of information on the website. You see the website list at the bottom of the page. That pretty well sums up what I wanted to go through this morning. I appreciate you listening to us. It's an honor to be here with you guys. Thanks so much. <laughs>